So this section is focused on getting code down from GitHub to our machine. Uh, and this is really important when we're collaborating with others because those other people will be changing our repositories, making new commits, pushing those up. How do we get those down? So before we talk about the different commands, git fetch and git pull, we have to understand a little bit more about how cloning a repo works and how remotes work. So when we clone a repository, whatever the repository is, whether it's one I made or I'm cloning React or some really popular open source repository, what happens is that, you know, we have at the very beginning, nothing on my machine. We have the GitHub repository. Let's just say it's three commits, one branch, the master branch. When I clone that, of course, git clone this URL, I end up with the three commits, all files from the repository. We have a git repo, right? We didn't have one before, now we do. And I have the master branch. But there's actually two branch references here, and we've only talked about one. So there is the standard master branch reference, a regular old branch reference. Uh, and I should mention, you know, this uses master, but whatever the default branch is, when we clone, that's what we end up with. So whether it's main or master or trunk or uh, purple chicken, it doesn't matter. Whatever that GitHub repo has as its default branch, that's what we're going to start with when we clone. Okay, so in this diagram, it's master. We have our regular branch reference, and that acts like any other branch reference. If we add new commits, it will move. Um, but then there's this other thing, origin slash master. This is something called a remote tracking branch reference. Uh, it sounds complicated, but basically it's just a pointer in the same way that this is a pointer, but this pointer does not move, or I don't move it myself. It's pointing back to the last known commit on the master branch from the origin remote. So in other words, wherever this is pointing, just like any other branch reference, I like to visualize them as uh, a repo as a big book with a bunch of bookmarks in there. So these two bookmarks will start at the same spot, but they might diverge as I do more work uh, and make commits on the master branch locally. So to reiterate, this term remote tracking branch, think of it as the bookmark or a pointer that remembers at the last time you communicated with this remote repo, here is where the master branch or the main branch or the purple branch was pointing on that GitHub repo on origin. So they follow this pattern, remote slash branch name. So Git names them for us. As we talked about, origin is a very common remote name. So we've got origin master, uh, but that might as well be origin eggplant or, or upstream. That's another common remote name that we'll talk about. Uh, and then logo design, that might be a branch. It could be any remote name slash a branch. But just as the example, if we clone a repo, by default when we clone, the remote name will be set to origin. And whatever that default branch name, in this case master, will give us origin master. So we can actually view these remote tracking branches if we use git branch with dash r. We can see that branch reference. So I'm gonna show you that now. So I'll make a new repository. Once again, just to demonstrate this, I'll call this animals and uh, I'll make it public. Uh, I won't add any files, so I'll just have this animals repository. And I'm gonna do something slightly different that we haven't seen before. I'm actually gonna create a new file on GitHub so uh, that when I clone it, I get some information uh, along with you know the initial state of my repo, I'll actually have some files. So I can make changes and make commits on GitHub. Uh, so my animals project, I'll have a file called pets dot txt and then in here i'm just going to keep it really simple I'll, I'll add some of my pets over the years i've got rusty and blue i've got a cat named scout she also goes by the name of rockets uh and i've got some chickens okay so whatever i have in this file um i then need to make a commit just like i would locally on my machine uh i'll just leave it as the default here create pets dot txt we make that commit great and now we have a file in my repository, and uh, we have one commit. And remember in GitHub, uh, on GitHub, the default branch name is main. If I don't push up a branch first, if I don't rename it, we'll go with main. Okay, so I'm gonna clone this now. I'll copy this URL like we've done before. And then I have a new empty folder. So you can see on my computer, I'm not in a repo and I'm gonna clone. So git clone that animals URL. So we now have this animals directory. And if I type git branch, we have one branch, main. 
But as we talked about, when I clone something, we automatically get this remote, right? Get remote dash V, it's called origin. And then the one branch we have is called main. But git sets up a remote tracking branch for this main branch on origin. It's this little reminder here, in this case, origin master, but in our case, origin main. But it's a remote tracking branch, a bookmark that holds the spot, the most recently known state of the master branch on origin, or in our case, of the main branch on origin. So right now, if I take a look, remember I can do this, git branch dash r, I can see this origin slash main, so the main branch on origin, that is the remote tracking branch. So currently, if we were to diagram this, we have two branch references pointing at the same commit because I just cloned. But in the next video, we'll see that we can get them to diverge and we can check one out and see the differences.